Hello. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to Learn How to Trade, formerly known as Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara. I'm Sharif, and we're loving having you on this uh, very shortened day, but uh, we're going to make the most of it nonetheless. We're going to be talking about a couple of, uh, I don't want to say my favorite chart patterns, but definitely the two that I seem to encounter the most. They are, we'll actually just wait until some people come in because I think we're having a little bit of, uh, it's taking a little bit of time for some people to come in. There we go. We got Darwin. We got Patrick. We got Chimps. Rich Naples was number two. He was there for a minute. Uh, we got Michael. Big Michael Lloyd. John. We got the white, the white writer. That's hilarious. Uh, the crazy stitch lady. Okay, we got her too. Chimps coming in. RHM Trades, Hangman, Luke Parent, shout out to all those guys. We are gonna be talking about some of uh, the best two patterns that I at least I encounter in my trading, which are the double top and the double bottom. I'll fix that uh, topic number three in a sec, but before we get to that, how was your morning, Adara? My morning has been um, great so far. I have my eye on some uh, weight loss drug plays, oh, yeah. what with the um, Wagovi uh, Japan right. introduction as of February, I wanna say 22nd. So um, yeah, I'm keeping an eye. I have my eyes peeled for Eli Lilly, of course. Um, NVO is looking mighty fine this morning. Um, yeah, like beautiful, just waiting for a dip opportunity there so I can jump in. What about you? How has your morning been? We've been okay. Been okay. We've been laughing it up here. It's oh, yeah, we've been having like a great time a, this morning. A lighter day. As you can notice, the floor behind me is a little empty today as traders do take the day off. But it is time to take care of some housekeeping. And we are brought to you by Search Trader account funding of up to $1 million. Keep up to 90% of the profit enjoy relaxed trading rules with an 8% max trailing drawdown on all new accounts. Shout out to folks there at Search Trader, who by the way, still have that 25% off site wide for the Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal. They're running from November 20th to the 27th. So you have about three more days to get onto that bad boy. Shout out to them. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some futures right before we get in to the first lesson here. I wanna do a little quick market recap. The NQ has been downtrending. There's been a very clear downtrend channel on the NQ. Um, we are at a critical level right here uh, for a couple of reasons. One, we've been wicking below 16,000 then coming right up above. So what I was looking for here on the NQ was the making of a higher high. And I was earmarking this candle here at 940 for the level that I wanted to break, which essentially was that 16, 011, 16, 012 area. We come right up to it, lo and behold, we find resistance there and we shoot right back down. So my plan was to wait for the making of a newer high and the defend of a 16,000 before wetting my beak into a futures long here. And I was earmarking that 13 level, giving it, you know, a couple of points above this high in case we, you know, we wicked it, you know, superficially, which looks like exactly what happened. So the high of this candle was 1150 and the high of this candle was, you guessed it, 1150 as well. So looks like we're gonna continue to churn on the NQ, but Tesla has been an absolute rocket. I mean, you know, it's only up 1.88% on the day, but comparing it to anything else, especially with the way it's moving counter market and that trend pattern, uh, looks awfully nice. You had an opportunity to get in around that 235 dip, but it really hasn't presented you with many more opportunities after that. It's been up and to the right and quite aggressively too as we knock on the door of that 239 level at area. So just two, those two, uh, want to get rid of those uh, two pieces of uh, business right there. Want to talk a little bit about the futures, talk a little bit about Tesla, and obviously how can we forget HKD? It continues Ooh. to squeeze as it knocks on the door $5. I know you weren't around, when this monster, this thing ran from like, I don't remember what it was, a dollar or two to $2,500 in like a couple of weeks. And it was squeezing, blowing out faces. That's wild. The spread though could have been like as as big as like 25 bucks, 30 bucks sometimes at times. Yeah, that's insane. crazy. It was insane, yeah. That's scary. Was, I would, uh, that would scare me. Quite the time to be alive. All right. What a time. Let's get right into uh, the first order of business here. Why am I not being able to find my notes? And there they are. All right, double tops. How are we doing double tops first? Yes, double tops. Um, we're gonna look for a double top in the wild, obviously, <laughs> but it is, um, you know, a slower day. HKD is really pumping here, guys. Uh, we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. But the double top 
We're going to look for the picture in the wild, but for the moment, we're going to try to load up a picture over here that will help. Uh, open image a new tab. There we go. So, there are four, sorry, five important points here on the double top that we need to be aware of. Number, number one, the double top is a bearish technical reversal pattern. We talked a lot last, um, the last couple of days before the, before the Thursday off about whether the pattern was a continuation pattern or whether it was a reversal pattern. We talked about the ascending triangles, the descending triangles, and the symmetrical triangles, or wedges, whatever you want to call them. These are continuation patterns. When we got to the head and shoulders, we talked about how that was a reversal pattern. So it was typically followed, uh, head and shoulders, by a long uptrend, and then it shows the ending of the uptrend through the break of the neckline. If you want to go back and have a look at that, go and have a look. We talked about the bull flag and the bull pennant being also continuation patterns. What we see right now is more akin to the head and shoulders. This is a reversal pattern. So a double top is a bearish technical reversal pattern. It's not always easy to spot because there, there needs to be confirmation with a breakdown below support. We'll get to that in a sec. When a double top is a bearish signal, a double bottom is a bullish signal. And that's what we're going to get to next. Tops usually have an upswing, an initial peak, a trough, a second peak, and then a neckline, much in the same way that we saw the neckline on the uh, head and shoulders. Ram, ram, come to the check. Uh, and traders can short the trade after the break or play small trades as double tops may have limited profit potential. So with these bad boys, the thing is, it really depends on where you see them. If you see a double bottom on the daily chart, you are more likely to encounter a longer term trend reversal than you if you see them on an intraday chart. If you see them on an intraday, you maybe the hourly, the half an hour, even the 10 minute, this might be just a short term trend reversal. Okay, it may run for a bit, Let's, I'm not giving you a hard and fast rule, half an hour, an hour, whatever, whereas if you see it on a more, on a higher time frame, a weekly, a daily, it is more likely to run for a longer period of time. So it's one of those ones where it is fractal, its use is fractal in nature. However, its duration and how long it runs for really depends on what time frame you're viewing it at. So the double top you know, is one that we obviously can make some sort of inferences from. This top one, two, clearly we know that that is a resistance level. We talked about support and resistance when we talked about um, managing risk, very clear. We can also tell that there is a support level. So this is resistance. We know that the trough area, it basically the bottom part of the M, this is a support area. So what we're looking for, for confirmation of the, the formation, the full formation of the pattern, is a break of this neckline. So once we have that neckline defined through the initial trough, what we're looking for on the second a touch at it is a decisive break. Now, go back to the rules that I talked to you about last week, the 3% rule, the three candle rule. Whether you're trading on the daily, you're looking for possibly three daily candles to close below that resistance level. If you're using the percentage rule, you're looking for a closing print 3% south of that neckline, and that helps with confirmation. In addition to that, you are looking for it to break on higher volume. Use volume as a confirmation for the break of that neckline there. Yes, right. I just wanted to um, burst in here for a moment. Um, Absolutely. Allison Mulcahy talking about the triple top on the one minute on arm, and I agree. Like, we have almost maybe a quadruple top here on the one minute on arm. One, uh, we, this resistance level is that 62.95 area, almost basically 63. One. Two, three, we're trying to make maybe a fourth triple top. I would argue this is kind of that. I want you to also look at something else. Now, what do you, give me your observation with respect to the lows, the troughs. Is there any observation that you can make specific to the troughs on this pattern here? They seem slightly higher. They do, and especially when you start a little bit more to the left. Oh yeah. The eye below. It's even, yeah, you're right, it's Incrementally higher. higher. The closing prints are all a little bit higher. Okay. So what? pattern does that show us when we have a flat top and higher lows? That could be an ascending breakout. Ascending wedge. Ascending, ascending wedge. Triangle. 
There you go. Yeah. So yeah, you, you're gonna. So there's so many times where the pattern can it intersect. Absolutely. It, it's not wrong that it's a triple top, but it's about to be a quadruple top if yeah. you reject off there. That is true. Right. But what I definitely notice is that's a clear resistance level at 63. There's no question about that, and you have the ascending uh, higher lows. Okay. So this. So then I guess I actually have a question that I already had, but okay. I feel like this go is a good it. opportunity to bring it up. Um, so if we have. Um, more touches of this, like, you know, I, we were talking about how there, if there, you have more touches of like, you know, like the channels, that usually implies a stronger breakout. Yes. Um, with something like this, if we have, um, other than I know this is slightly complicated by the higher lows, but generally if you have like a triple, quadruple top, et cetera, or bottom, does that mean uh, the breakout to the downside or upside will be stronger from that I generally? Don't know if necessarily it's gonna be stronger, okay. but it makes the level more important. More, okay, it's right? just kind of proving the significance of the levels. Right, okay. yeah, so it's not just some sporadic price movement where you're happening to see what you want. Oh, look how many touches I see at 63. <laughs> no, every time it touches off there and it rejects off there, it says to you, Adair, I'm an important level. Yeah, it's right? like screaming at yeah, you yeah. the more times it rejects, okay. Thank you. I'm an important level. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, so uh, that's, a, that's a great look, by the way. And I, I had a couple of good trades on arms. I, I gave, on arms, on arm, I gave some money okay. back, that, uh, sadly, as I tried to take a dip off 63. I was basically trading it the same way Neil was trading it. Nice. Even though we didn't really uh, organize that, it, we just ended up happening to do it the same way. Um, so yeah. Uh, someone's saying a double top. Austin's saying double top on Mara. And if that's accurate, I'd love to show you an, a pattern in the wild over here. <laughs> in there, the wild. Say. I like that. I'm yeah. going with it. I'm happy. M-A-R-A. Works. Thank you. Let's have a look. It my, takes my platform here a minute to load Mara, and it's been that way for some time. Is it on the one minute, Austin? Because I don't quite see it on the five. Let's have a look at the one. We're looking at M-A-R-A, -A, guys, Marathon. Uh, digital, it is a crypto related stock. It's a miner. Hurry up, bro. It's so funny that we say Mara, but it's pronounced marathon. Like no, it's not I marathon. See, I don't see a double top here unless you're looking at a water time frame. I see higher lows with an 1160 resistance level. So I got to disagree with that. Um, but yeah, I see what you're going with. Let the pattern develop. It could end up turning into a double top or it could end up not. Um, I, may, I may get into this uh, NQ long here very shortly as we continue to make higher lows. I've got my, uh, my script order already in place. It's not going to be an active trade. I've already put it in there. So if it triggers, it might show up on the board. So double tops, Adara, uh, just before we go on to the double bottom, any other questions with respect to that? Um, I will think about them. I definitely probably do have more, but I feel like generally my questions just kind of pop up. Yeah. As I think about them, I do have some other um, questions and notes written down, sure. so I'm going to cross-reference those now. But yeah, for now, I'm, I think a lot of the questions I'd have about one would be similar to the ones I have about the other. Actually, okay, so that does remind yeah, me. I do have a question it. kind of about both. Yeah. So, And I'm going to find a way to word this because I feel like it's slightly convoluted. Okay. So if you have, um, let's say you have like a double top, which is like a bearish, um, yes. generally bearish formation, but uh, we're actually up on the day. So I know sometimes it's like seen as kind of counter trend if you trade, uh, if you short when we're up on the day or if you go long if we're low on the right. day. Um, is that counteracted if we have patterns that generally reflect, let's say bearishness when we're up on the day or bullishness when we're down on the day? So you're absolutely right. So by definition, when you get a double top, you've had a previous uptrend. Yeah. Because it's a reversal. Point, yeah, that's why right? I was kind of confused. So you're bang on. And you and I have talked about going with the trend rather than trying to be, you know, uh, Nostradamus and trying to <laughs> time tops, yeah. right? Which is, you know, uh, I love that compulsion some there. people have, Yeah. right? Um, so yes, by definition, you're going to be taking a counter trend trade. But the beautiful part about this is that sample size is a little bit larger. You have that definition of the oh, initial okay. top and then you had a move down. So you could tell, okay, well, buyer stepped in here. And then you have another top that's very similar. They're not exactly always the same. Some It's like the head and shoulder where you can have like a slightly wonky yeah, shoulder. Yeah, exactly. Some one of the tops could be higher than the other, okay? Okay. And then you get a move back down into that key support level. So you've have defined levels. Now you know you've got two touches at a general resistance area and you've already had one touch at the support area. So what you're looking for is the break of the support area on above average volume. So you're okay. looking for that above average volume. And by definition, it is going to be a riskier trade, especially intraday, Okay. especially intraday. The way obviously to alleviate some of that concern, uh, that risk is to place your stop 
at a very specific level. And you okay. know what that level is, because yeah. you know what the resistance level is. So place it a smidge above that resistance level. And okay. so that has to basically make that, ha when you do that, you have to be assessing your risk to reward. So if okay. you have to give, let, let's say this is $63, like it is on ARM, oops. And this is $62, this neckline over here. Yeah. So we have a dollar worth of range. So I know that if for me to have a two to one risk, word, risk to reward ratio, I need to see at least a possibility of a $2 move below the risk of that, okay. below the break of that neckline. Or it's not worth it. Yeah. Okay. And so then how do I, you're going to ask me, Sharif, how the hell do I know if it could move two bucks, right? And you'd be justified in asking. So what you're looking for is a, resi or, uh, is a resistance level, sorry, or support level, pardon me, below the break of that neckline that's at least $2 away. So you can say to yourself, okay, this is a very clearly defined support level. If it breaks down, this is an actually a double top, there is a good chance that I reach this support level here, over here, which is $2 away from the break of the neckline. Okay. Which is over here again, guys. Yeah. When I talk about neckline, I'm talking about the break of this key support level. Okay. So, number one, you place your stop right above resistance, and then the move, you have to be able to project at least, if you're going to do a one-to-one, -one, then it'll be a $1 move. If it's going to be two, three, you guys get it. It has, there has to be something on the chart to show you that the break of this neckline, the support level below it, is at least enough to justify a one-to-one, two-to-one, three-to-one, whatever you're trading at there. So you have to be able to make that assessment. Now, a lot easier said than done in real time, guys, uh, with uh, some of these names. And as I say that, HKD is absolutely pumping to the high Woo! side shades of summer 2020 the when shades, this yeah. yeah when this thing went absolutely through the roof I'll never forget that can I show you Adara quickly what it did here cuz I think you you need to see this I think I do. you need to see this for yourself let's go HKD and then we're going to go to the daily oh my gosh. just to show you no this is the this is right now okay. wait wait okay so this is not uh, this is not anything busted this is the real deal Huh? It was at like sub $25 and in days. Okay, let me move. Let me uh, zoom out so I can bring it for you properly over here. Is this wild? No, no, it was, it was a real deal. It was squeezing monstrous amounts per day, guys. I'll never forget this. And there were traders on this floor like, let me just punch in 20 shares. Let me just punch in 20 shares. And if they had, I mean, they would have printed, but it was just so risky. You couldn't justify this trade yeah. on the floor. And then getting shorts on this down, it was like $100 a share. Yeah, to, for, to short this. There was so much demand to short this. I'll I need to look this it. up later. This yeah, is crazy. Yeah, it was madness. It was absolute madness. It was good times. Um, all right, before we go on uh, to the double bottom, which is essentially the same thing as the double top, uh, we're going to take some questions now before we go on. Yes, Jer, Jer Mart, I see HKD. And HKD, Neil, HKD squeezing, uh, is pumping here into 550, possibly just broke through five and a third. Uh, so, yeah, excitement. I I'll take it. I love watching uh, this kind of stuff, guys. All right. Joe Fenro. HKD's going, bro. Uh, Sharif, Adara, I get you Canadians like to break necklines, ha. Huh? But did you celebrate a full turkey sit-down dinner yesterday? No, my friend, we did not because we are more north. And the northern part of North America has to harvest uh, much earlier than uh, my American cousins and friends south where you have a bit of a better climate. So our Thanksgiving is in mid-October. Is it the first week or second It's week? usually the, the first to second. I think it kind of varies. It's generally like before the 15th of October. Yeah. I'm going to use that as my guideline. Yeah. So that's what we do here. So we didn't have any turkey, but the day off was absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, I couldn't yeah. complain about that. Also, we have a super chat, it. and I'm so sorry. I really hope I don't mispronounce your name. Uh, Gnome is my name. $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Hi, Sharif. Happy Thanksgiving. I thank should have let you friend. read that. I appreciate sorry. you, Gnome. Uh, thank you for saying that. Uh, and obviously, th happy Thanksgiving to you as well, my friend. And I hope uh, you, know, you join us uh, every day and, and you do well on your trading. Um, all right, going down the list here, guys. If you have any questions, put them in now before we move on, baby. But uh, shout out to Arup Love from India. Love back to you, brother. Mike Boston says HKD went Burj Khalifa. <laughs> I like that, uh, which is that big, 
building in Dubai. Oh, okay, I was gonna yeah, say yeah, I do yeah. not. It's like the highest know building that in the world. Yeah, That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, guys. So HKD is an absolute rocket as it moves up possibly into that six dollars, guys. I mean, this could absolutely squeeze, especially if traders get wind and then you know leave the dinner table and make their way over to the computer to start punching long here, baby. We could definitely see a, see a short squeeze. I don't know what the short float is on it. I'm gonna pull up trade ideas. Give me one quick moment here to find out. Shout out to the NOS boss who uh, took my question today, um, you know, without me giving him a heads up and absolutely had a spot on answer. Char chartered market technician uh, extraordinaire yeah, at that was HKD. Awesome. Let's go pull this up. All right, I'm not getting, sadly, the short float on HKD from uh, Trade Ideas, so we're gonna go to floatchecker.com, which is my alternate source, and um, floatchecker.com, there we go. Let's have a look at what it is. It's gonna take a minute to load here. Yeah, no worries. Um, I will just provide an update. I was trying to get this um, little dip buy on NVIDIA, and then it dipped lower. Um, we're more or less at my point where I was trying to get out. Um, so if we can recover from here, because I wanted to get out around 480.80, because that was where we were noticing that kind of lower low. Uh, right now, we're dancing around 481. If we remain dancing around 481, I remain in this long. If we do not remain dancing around that level, I do not. Uh, but we picked up a little bit there. Yeah, I just wanted to provide an update on um, this decision, because we are seeing, you know, slightly higher lows here. Look what I said the right way. We have higher lows and higher highs. Okay. So, um, yeah, so now we're a couple cents in the money. Um, but, you know, as I learned from Wednesday, 10 cents is a spread. Um, so I'm trying to take uh, a little bit more profit, if possible, right now. Uh, yeah, we're still how So it's not working. So I won't be able to, uh, to check. Go to FinViz. Somebody says, yeah, Dave, yeah, maybe I might have to do that. Uh, FinViz, yeah. All this stuff, guys, by the way, is older. Uh, so I don't even know how to check it on FinViz. How do I do that? HKD. You guys can come to the screen. Um, I think it was like under ownership or something like that before. Yeah, I'm not gonna have to, I won't be able to do this live. Let's see, flow. Short flow, nice, okay. 6.55%. Okay, so not much. About 6.5% of the float according to Vinviz. So we'll have to see how that goes. All right, now second piece of, um, Second uh, pattern we're gonna do is the double bottom. So, let's get a picture of that double bottom over here. Double. And we'll go images. There we go. One moment to let me load up this bad boy. Yeah, also there's a question here from Gatoon in the chat about um, when the market closes. It closes at one today. Yeah, that's fine. All right, here we go. This is the double bottom over here. And here's what you need to know about it. A double bottom pattern is a classic technical analysis charting formation pattern showing a major change in trend from a prior down move. So what you need to know is that the, tr the, the pattern is preceded by a move down. So there has to be a preceding trend where the move was down and to the right. The double pot bottom pattern looks like the letter W in the same way that the double top looks like the M. The twice touch low is considered the support level. So in the exact same way as a twice touch top on the double top is a resistance level, this is looked as a support level, okay? The double bottom pattern always follows a major or minor downtrend in a particular security and signals the reversal and the beginning of a potential uptrend. The double bottom patterns occur relatively often and in many different time frames, and we're gonna talk about what they mean on different time frames, and here's the kicker, like it was for the double top, a daily, daily, not an intraday, a daily or weekly double bottom pattern may indicate a longer term trend reversal or shift in the trend, while an hourly or an intraday double bottom may only signal a brief pause in the downtrend. But when you're trading intraday, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference to you if you're gonna you know, have a daily, uh, downtrend change. You're looking for intraday volatility. So when you see the double bottom on the intraday time from whether you're charting on the 5, 10, 15, what have you, what you should be immediately looking for is number one, where the neckline is. So this right here, 
Okay? You're looking for this line right here. In, in fact, I would just look for a close above these two candles personally. And then what you're looking for, the, the clear resistance level above the neckline. Why? Because you need to be able to chart to see where the likely resistance level is above the break of the neckline because you're going to go long on the break of the neckline if you see what you need to see, and which is volume um, in addition to some other things. And then you have to do your risk to reward assessment. So you have to say, okay, I'm getting long right here. Between right here and right here is $1, meaning I need to see a, a support or a resistance level at least $2 away from this neckline north if I'm gonna do a two to one. So right away you need to be looking for a major resistance level above the break of the neckline to gauge how much potential upside you have. And it's easier said than done because you could see po multiple resistance levels and it's gonna be by experience and by more practice that you discern which level is the more important of the bunch. And that may include zooming out and looking to see which one of those possible resistance levels has more, uh, has more you know, weight based on the longer term time frame. So if you were on the 15 and you zoom up to the four hour and you see one particular level is recycled over and over again, you should be able to discern this is the better level that I need to keep my eye on. The other one was more noise related. So this is the support level, this is the resistance level, and this is the difference between them. And so you need to be able to gauge this in order to justify your risk to reward ratio. Um, I saw a question actually um, from Jacek. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name here. Um, hi guys, when is it worth buying a double bottom blindly? I mean, I think generally like we're, we're kind of talking, like making sure there's some kind of risk and reward, right? Yeah. Kind of make sure that you, you kind of know what you're getting into um, in that regard. I think, yeah, I, like, I, I guess maybe more context on that question. Like when you say blindly, do you mean, yeah, someone's saying never in the chat, yeah. I mean, I think never, like yeah. you, you kind of, I would say wait, wait for it to kind of develop um, and then have risk and reward in mind too, right? But yeah, blindly, I'm kind of curious as to what that necessarily entails because I think if you have a plan, you're not, you're not really doing it blindly, right? But it really, it really does kind of depend um, on the scenario. I'm not really sure to answer that question, yeah. but um, I think that will be, that, yeah, it's an interesting pattern. For sure, and I'm guessing it's the same kind of with the double top, that the more we confirm the, the level, the more touches we have, the more uh, confirmation of resistance. Well, um, in this particular case, um, because it's a double bottom oh, okay. and double top, That's fair. by definition, you're only really getting two touches at the support or the resistance level. Okay. But I see what you're saying. What you're saying is not wrong. It's absolutely accurate. But in this case, you only, you know, you only by need, definition, okay. you're only getting two, right? And then it's a, or it's a triple top. It's okay. a triple, which happen, but are far less, uh, far less common. They're less common. Yeah, okay. they are. They're just by the nature of things. So, um, yeah, good question there. Any other questions, guys? Put them in the chat. We're already half an hour. Can you believe we're already half an hour deep? How? Jeez, we only have half an hour left to go. Uh, we don't have much longer. But, yeah, it is never really a good idea to get in blindly on anything. And I'm not trying to single you out. That's just really... Uh, you know, I know sometimes there are impulses. You like, you know, you, you get a, a degree of FOMO. You like the level. FOMO's hard. That's it's, a hard it's a one. It's a real B word uh, because you know, it really does, you know, really deviate you from your plan uh, because emotions get into it rather than raw intellect and raw logic. Uh, and, you know, you don't want emotions to play in this game. Again, I'm being very hypocritical when I say this because... <laughs> we all I've do been, it. I've been, I've been there, right? I've been yeah. absolutely there, so... I think the thing is, too, especially um, sometimes that comes with... And I say this all the time, but I still, you know, it's very true, is I find emotions, like, get in my way when I, when I leave a trade too early because I get worried, right? Like I have yeah. risk and reward in mind and then I kind of leave it at the door, I leave it in the wayside and I run right? blindly in panic with my emotion. Like this NVIDIA trade, we're still about, we're very well within my risk reward ratio because I said I'll get out if we see a definitive break of 480. Mm. Oh, now we're running up. See, because the thing is that I get, basically go. I'm trying to be patient. I did not want to be in this super long anyway. Like I said, I'm just kind of trying to get the dip here. Um, but yeah, so if I had gotten out when I was kind of first panicking that we were breaking down a little bit, I would have lost out. But in the end, I can still make some money in this trade again because I am being a little bit scalpier about it. Like I said, you know, I don't want to stay here for a million years. 
Um, but yeah, so I think like in terms of, I guess this is getting ahead of ourselves here because we're talking about patterns, but I think in terms of like going in blindly, I think have that risk reward ratio in mind because that can also remind you or like whatever, whatever risk management strategy you use, because that'll keep you in check if you're a little bit stressed out. If you're having, and, and you're in a good trade and you're kind of freaking out, right? Or a trade that hasn't broken down on you yet. Um, and I think I learned that a lot too, like, you know, here on the, the midday, like, you know, Sharif talking about like, oh, the trade remains valid in this scenario, right? I think that's also, you know, keeping in mind to yourself, is the trade still valid by my parameters? All right, guys, we are brought to you by Benzinga. Use the link in the description for Benzinga's Black Friday deal. The greatest deal of the year, including 75% off Benzinga Pro. Monthly subscriptions now as low as $49.25 a month. The everything terminal for retail traders. Visit pro.benzinga.com and use the coupon code TTV. NOV, that's TTV NOV for November to save 75% now. New subscribers only and conditions do apply. So read those bad boys. Uh, yeah, so shout out to uh, the good folks there. Benzinga and Adara will attest to Benzinga. Oh, I love it. She Benzinga. uses it very often. I see it on top it of the screen. It literally is at the visible. Moment. If I pull down my screen, yeah. it is here. Also, there's a super chat from um, Samuel Martin, a 199 super chat. Thank you so much, Samuel Martin. Thoughts on BKKT and the coming one world currency. Um, what? <laughs> I love how it's just like loaded. With yeah, <laughs> I don't honestly not that familiar. Back holdings. I can pull up the chart for you. 25% um, up on the day. Okay, this daily is, is nice. Let's see if we can kind of break above here because we had a bit of a trough there. This is what we would call an upward channel, mm. um, I believe, on the five minute. Let's look at the daily on... KKT backed. Okay, this is a this daily is strong. What? The um, let me zoom out more. I mean, okay, we could actually have a double top here if we don't kind of break above this this two dollar area because it seems like one ninety five seems like a skosh of a resistance point here for BKKT. Um, but yeah, like lower lows. This is this is a, a chart and a half. I'll put it to you like that. Let's see what I've got in BKKT um, backed. Um, Rosenblatt maintained by as of Wednesday, November 15th, so nothing super recent. Um, lowered the price target to 170. It's, it's above 170 right now. Certainly, yeah, I don't have much on this beyond. This is definitely running today. Um, looks pretty strong. Like this comeback from November 8th has been really strong as well. So keep an eye on this. All right, um, Bears versus Bulls saying uh, BKKT has been, and the one world currency has been a thing on Wall Street bets oh, for a while. I did not know that. Yeah, neither did I. I haven't been on Wall Street bets in a minute. But yeah, good day today, 24%. Clearly, we started running up back on the 13th, 14th, I would say. And it's been a, a good-looking daily chart since that time. I don't know too much about the company, so I won't opine on that. But let's get back now into uh, Double Tops. Ram Ram, if we could, because I don't have the previous topic button. Thank you. Appreciate that. Ram Ram, always killing it on the ones and twos. Uh, let's bring in the... Double top. Do I have the picture? I do. Nice. All right. Oh. Open image in new tab. There we go. All right. All right, guys. Double tops. Again, just like we talked about double bottoms, there's not much of a variance except what precedes the formation of these patterns. On the double top, you will be pre it will be preceded by a bigger or a, a distinct uptrend. So what you're looking for is the, the pattern to form at what you know eventually is the conclusion of this uptrend. So this over here has to be a move up. And it's not just simply this amount of action over here. It's typically much longer, okay? It's always a bearish technical reversal pattern. It's not always easy to spot because there's a need for confirmation below the break of support. We'll get to that in a sec. While a double top is a bear signal in the exact same way, a double bottom is a bullish signal. Top usually, uh, sorry, the tops usually have an upswing, an initial peak, a trough, and a second peak and a neckline. Here's what I mean by that. There's top number one, top number two. They don't have to be the same level. One can be higher than the other as long as it's, you know, a discernible uh, M looking pattern. This is the neckline and this is an important area to chart because that's where you're looking subsequently uh, for the price level to break. 
So in the same way that you're whole looking for this general resistance level to be very much the same, you're looking for this neckline to break. And by the way, this neckline doesn't always have to be horizontal. It can be diagonal, like we talked about, the head and shoulders pattern, right? It could be downward sloping, it could be upward sloping, so long as there is a discernible M level there, M shape there, okay? And what you're looking for, again, is to break this level. And then, before you get into the, into the trade, you're going to chart the height, or the, sorry, the price difference between the resistance level up, up here and the support level. So let's just say this top over here is $63, and this is 62, so we know that the, between support and resistance on the double top, it's a $1. And then you're gonna look for a price level below support that fits your risk to reward ratio. Everybody's will be different. You wanna trade on a three to one, I wanna trade on a two to one. Adara's fine trading on a one to one. Yeah. So I'm just giving you an example. I'm not saying yeah. that you are. Well, I mean, sometimes I am. But yeah, I, yeah, I didn't mean it like that. Though. Oh, well, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank so you. what you're looking for is if Adara was gonna get into this trade, she's looking for a key support level that's south of support by at least $1 to justify her risk to reward ratio. Why? Because her stop is gonna go right at the top of support, meaning that she has to risk a dollar worst case scenario on this move. If she's gonna risk a dollar on this move, she's gotta make at least a dollar under her risk parameters. On mine, I need to see two. Now, you're gonna say, Sharif, what the hell are you talking about? How can I know possibly how far the neckline, how far the price action is gonna break below the neckline? Well there's ways to do that. You're gonna have to look for key areas of support south of the neckline that may not be visible on the current time frame that you're trading. If you're trading on the five, you may have to zoom out. As Neil says all the time, when in doubt, zoom out. And so that's what you're looking for there. You're gonna go on the daily, you're gonna go on the hourly, the half an hour, whatever, to zoom out away from your time frame and you're looking for a discernible level. And you may see multiple levels. Right? There's not gonna just be that one clear support level or oftentimes there isn't. So what you need to zoom out even more and see which one of those levels has more uh, you know, support behind it on the wider time frame. okay? You're looking for more touches at that level. The more resistance or support there is at that level, the more respected that level is going to be. So that's what you're looking for there. But I know oftentimes there's a lot of noise, so your ability to be able to spot that level will be based on practice, practice, and more practice, okay? That's just what it comes down to. So five key takeaways. Let's go into them again. A double top is a bearish technical reversal pattern. It's not always easy, easy to spot because there's a need for confirmation below the neckline over here. Well, a double top is a bear signal. Obviously, the double bottom is a bullish signal. Tops usually have an upswing, an initial peak, and then a trough, and then a second peak, and then the break of the neckline, which is this over here. The neckline is not always horizontal. It could be sloped upward or downward. It's not an exact science, as we've been saying, it's an art. And lastly, traders can short the trade after the break or place a small trade just below the neckline and then basically limit their, their uh, risk to the top of the resistance there. Are there any questions or anything in the chat? Um, I saw a question in the chat. Um, oh yeah, okay, how do you, from Soul Runner for Life, I love this question, how do you determine the angle of the neckline with only one data point? Um, I'm in the futures trade now. Oh, nice. Good yeah, it triggered me to a new high, but it looks like I'm going to get nice. bamboozled here. We're going to have to wait and see. Yeah, okay, I mean, I think on, the, yeah. the angle doesn't necessarily um, matter as much. I think, like, it, you're kind of, as it doesn't really matter if it's sloped or not, right? Like, I think, I guess, like, maybe, like, clarify the question. How do you determine the angle with just one data point? What one data point? We know we have at least two data points there, guys. We have yeah. a double top, and then we have the trough which is support, and then we have the break of the support at the neckline. So by definition, you've got two data points of the north and two data points of the south. In addition to that, you have to chart below. On the double, on the double top, you have to look below to see where the support is so you can do your risk reward. That's another data point that you're using. So by definition, the pattern already gives you four data points, a double top 
and, uh, and the break of the neckline, the trough area, which gets broken on the second attempt. Right away, and then you've got to figure out the fifth data point, which is that support level south of the break of the neckline. Yeah, um, there's another question here too that I think is interesting, and I have um, some, I think, an opinion on here. Um, I don't, I can't find it now, but um, whoever said it, uh, thank you very much. Uh, but someone said like something about how um, can you just get in at um, the second double top. Now I have done that. I'm going to be honest. I did that on Disney a couple days ago. I I'll see if I can find this. We, it was, we talked about this. Remember the yeah. other day about getting in getting, the peak of the head. Yeah, you of can the get shoulder. in at the peak. Um, but then I find sometimes too is like my issue. But the issue with that, um, although I did get in, is a you can risk it maybe going higher if you get in on that double top. Or the other issue is um, too. And for me, it's kind of hard to plot. Um, you know, a point of a stop point if you're going short on that because you don't know how much higher it could go, well, right? Well, there you go. That was kind of my issue yeah. with that. I ended up doing it because we did have like a slightly higher area that day on Disney. So I was like, I can use that as my my exit point. Um, and it ended up working out. But yeah, it definitely is a bit of a riskier um, trade. I would say something, especially that is a little bit more volatile, like a mega cap, if you're going to try to do um, anything like that without like a double top or something without any kind of form of um, resistance to move off of or like, you know, a strong stop a strong area of support i would say it's probably a bit riskier also i have another question which might be yeah. kind of strange no. but i was just thinking too we'll, we'll find out <laughs> with the um i know what you're saying with the head and shoulders uh, you were saying if the shoulder is slightly higher um if the second trough is slightly higher it's more bearish and if the if that's my theory lower okay it's more i gotta bullish. i gotta make that very clear that's yeah, my theory yeah i'm not theory. saying it's always the case but yeah, yeah. yeah so then i was wondering mm -hmm. is that also true with regards to the double top if the trough if it's a lower trough would or a higher trough in the middle, does that make a difference? Yeah, you know what? Look, I, remember we called it the extra bearish double bottom? Yeah. Right? Remember back in the day oh, we right? were saying that okay. stupidness, okay, right? Yeah. I was saying it. Um, uh, that's just my theory, but I don't have evidence to support that, nor do I have the data. Uh, quickly, I, I want to show you a head and shoulders pattern that, we, that I found in the wild. This is IWM, which is the Russell 2000 oh, yeah, the ETF. Yes. Um, and you know that this stock, uh, sorry, this you know group has been absolutely beat up on the year because it's been the Mag Seven that's making the big boy moves, and uh, small caps have been absolutely uh, hammered. So here's what I'm looking at here. This is the head, the top of the head. Oh, okay. Here are the shoulders. This is the first shoulder, the left shoulder right there, and that's the right shoulder. And this is the neckline and see how it's an upwardly sloping neckline? Huh. So you had basic support around there, you got a big move up and then look at the move down. And then we almost have a possible inverse head and shoulders now forming oh. on the Russ. And we know that the Russ has been booming lately uh, because of you know anticipation of rates coming down. And we know why, because these smaller companies that don't have a lot of cash on hand, when they need to raise money and grow, they got to go into borrow money at higher rates. That kills their margins and their profitability. Whereas the bigger companies have a lot of cash on hand. They don't need to go into the money market to raise funds. So here's one in the wild. It's a good look. Uh, I've never seen one quite like this where you had uh, a head and shoulders right here. And then you had a nice uh, downtrend for you know, a better part of two months and then a reversal over here. So this, I'm not saying it is, but definitely something to keep in mind because we were talking about the head and shoulders pattern on Wednesday. In the wild, yeah. The wild. Baby. We were having a hard time finding one in the wild on Wednesday. I know that yeah. was an issue. We kept hunting, we yeah, kept yeah. searching high yeah. and low. But yeah, so thank you for bringing that one Question. to everyone in attention. JB, does it matter what time frame you use? Yes. Okay. Now. These patterns are all fractal, meaning that you can use them on any time frame. However, with the double top and the double bottom, when you see it on the daily or the weekly, it usually indicates that that particular instrument is gonna have a prolonged period of downturn on a double top or prolonged period of an upturn on a double bottom. However, when you see it on an intraday time frame, it doesn't mean that that stock is gonna all of a sudden reverse on the daily. No, intraday it may reverse and it just may be a short while. So you have to take advantage of it while it lasts. So I would say to you what, what you need to be looking here, at, which is something that we didn't say for any of the other patterns with the double top and the double bottom, it, although applicable on all time frames, 
how much they move and for how long they move is directly dependent on what time frame you see them. You see them on the daily, the weekly, it's likely gonna be a multi-day, maybe multi-week move, but you see them on the intraday, whatever the hour, half an hour, what have you, it's likely going to be either a one or two day or just an intraday move. So you need to be cognizant of that. And that wasn't the case for some of these other patterns. Soul runner for life. Oh, Sharif, you're saying you project the angle between the two peaks down to the bottom peak. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that soul runner for life. Uh, explain to me what you, uh, what you mean. And I don't mind answering the question. I just didn't understand it. Elon, Adara Sharif, hi, stop throwing money at us. I'm not throwing anything at you, man. Oh, why? Why? Because we're giving you knowledge and you kept, you're printing? Is that why, my friend? We're going to drop the cash for you. The Katina man is not here to drop the cash, but we'll drop the cash. Uh, Dr. J says SQ bull flag. That's a pattern we covered on one. Yeah. I'm going to look at square. Yeah, let's take a look at See if there's a, a bull flag at, happening at right there. Square. At square. Um, SQ over here. Oh, oh okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Say okay. So we have this beautiful, yeah. it's a very long flagpole here on Yeah, square. it looks good. That's uh, actually looks, looking good. This looks gorgeous. Yeah. Um, just above 59 to um, just below 60. So you have about a dollar of a breakout. If we're going to measure the flagpole as a breakout area, you have about a dollar. We're all learning together. I'm learning like a lot. So happy to be able to practice this. Hopefully I'm learning, right? Um, and then you have this, um, this kind of slow um, movement in here, this flag motion here. We're kind of um, chopping and training in this diagonal motion. We had a bit of a breakdown first. And then we broke up to the upside. So then you'd want to measure your breakout if you got in on this. Um, I, I'm actually curious, though, too, on something like this where we had a movement down first and then up, mm. would you measure your breakout from the point that we broke up to after here? Or so what you want is you want a, uh, an established range, oh, right? Okay. Because remember with the flag as opposed to the pennant, uh, it's usually a rectangle, whether oh, it's an yeah. upwardly sloped rectangle, a horizontally one, or a downward, whereas the pennant has a compression pattern. Okay. Do you see a compression pattern there? Not really, no. No. So you, what you need is you need price action. You need to allow it to develop so that you can basically have a general idea of the tops and the bottoms. That okay. way you can know, okay, this, is a, this looks like the clearly defined top. My breakout will be through here. And then what are you looking for on the breakout of the actual thing? What supporting piece of information? Volume for go. confluence. Shout out to Obi, who's not sitting down right now, but shout out to him still. Um, yeah, no, I think that I think the really big learning thing for me this week too has been looking at how volume kind of interacts and bolsters oh, yeah. all of these patterns, supplements, everything. I think it's um it's really yeah, neat, man. and I think it's like a big takeaway for me. And yeah, I mean with with Square, I more. Um, we did volume's kind of been meh ish all day uh, just because of you know everything like we have yeah. le less volume in general, but we did have some volume spikes um kind of on the way up with this flight pulse. This is clearly an important level. Um, and then we're kind of seeing a little bit of jumpiness in volume mind, as we go higher. Today is a bit of an outlying day. Yeah, it's a, it's because, a Friday half yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. So let's yeah. not expect exactly the type of things that we would want to normally see on a regular yeah. day, right? That's fair. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's where that stands. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? I'm just going through them here. By the way, I know people are typing uh, my name in the chat, but guys, if you don't type my full name and get, get me the tagged, in the red like that, I literally have to read them all, and I. Oh, someone said over. Professor Sharif, you're the best educator ever. Oh, Bye, Young thank Cam you. over here. That's so nice of you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. It's not true, but uh, it's nice of you to say. Uh, Chocopi, 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 Chocopi. Okay, whatever. I like that name. Sharif, what chart pattern would you say you had most success with? I actually don't know the answer to that. My, huh. my friend, mostly because I'm not successful, but um, in, in, you know, in seriousness though, I don't have the data um, to give you that. But if you were looking to be able to acquire the data, a lot of these websites, what they do is they allow you to upload your trades and they digest all your trades and then they spew back to you different data points that you didn't even think about. Like the time of day that you're most successful, the type of equity, that you trade that's most successful? Is it small caps, large caps, what have you? Uh, the price of the stock that you're most successful with, all these different data points. So if you wanted to be able to gauge that for yourself, I would suggest to you that you get one of those websites. I don't have one that I can recommend, but there's just so many out there. Just do a quick Google search. The Boring Man, Sharif, 
can you please see if PayPal has a double bottom? I just talked to Neil about PayPal, and he's looking at PayPal as a prolonged bear flag, all right? P-Y-P-L, let's look at the intraday look here on PayPal, and I tend to agree with the Neil on this one. Yeah. Look at this, this is like a big move down. the there, yeah. There you go, there you go. And so we, we're getting, a, you know, and this doesn't mean that it's gonna manifest. The way that, you know, Adara and I were talking about bull flags and bull pennants and bear flags and bear pennants is, they don't always end up moving in the direction, or they don't always end up manifesting. Meaning, because what you're looking for after the creation of the first bull flag is the second one. You want the second one to break out through the top end of the range. That doesn't always happen. So what I wanna say is, participate, don't anticipate. Wait for that decided break on volume. If you wanna even be a bit more cautious, put your order a couple of shekels above the top end of the range or the bottom end on, in the case of a bear uh, pattern uh, so that you, you're kind of shielded somewhat from uh, these, the noise, the intraday noise that we have. But like, right now I can tell you, right now, look at this, lower highs on this bad boy. And to some extent, we're getting a bit of lower low, but not really. So this could be a bit of a bull pennant. Now look, in this case, I'm charting from the close, and on this case here, I'm charting from the wick. And that's just something you're gonna have to come to, you know, to grips with, that you're gonna, you're gonna have to cheat a little bit, especially intraday. Okay, come to, come to the chart, because I wanna make this point. Oh. Look at this, see this? I'm charting it from the wick, whereas this one I'm charting it from oh. the close. So I'm cheating, and that's just part. This is not a science, people. It is an art. You're gonna have to have some sort of uh, leniency with yeah. yourself there. But leniency, I love yeah, it. Yeah, go ahead, Adair. Also, yeah, I'd like to bring up this NVIDIA trade, because I was actually successful on this. Um, which I'm, I'm happy to say because I was getting a little impatient just to skosh here. Someone asked me in the chat here why did I get out of NVIDIA. I got out of NVIDIA. We made 40 cents on NVIDIA. Basically, I... I was doing it for RAM. Right? Okay. I, I was so, in my ear. I was so confused for a second. I was like, I made 40 cents on NVIDIA sale. <laughs> but, oh, no. No, I figured it wasn't to me, but I was just oh. like laughing. Yeah, so I got in probably a little bit too high. Basically, I was trying to buy the dip because I was seeing, I know we were down on the day, but I was kind of just trying to have a scalp here. I'm really proud of where I got out here, though, because I got out basically at the top of the wick, the highest that we got to the upside before falling down. I was basically noticing a lot of chop and turn, a lot of abilities decisively breaking above 180, 482, 182, 482. We got, we broke above 482. I said sayonara, and I took my profits, and I ran for the hills. Could I have stayed longer potentially? But I think part of, like I was saying too, I think part of risk management is protecting your profits. I figured if I didn't get out here, I wouldn't really make much profit at all. And I have to say, I'm pretty sure that was an accurate assessment because now we're breaking decisively below 481 as far as I can tell. Um, but yeah, I think, I know this was a counter trend trade, but I think like looking at it from a scalp, pers uh, scalp perspective, which I was, I got why I did it when I realized it was getting a little uh, herky jerky over here. Um, I decided to, moving around all willy-nilly, I decided to get out. Um, also, some mentions of um, Shopify in the chat. I was taking a look at this one earlier because I saw some mentions in the chat. Looks a bit like a flat bottom to me, a little bit of a descending wedge. Lower high, lower high. Um, I'm assuming another lower high. Bottom, 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 bottom. Um, like, and like we were saying too, the more kind of touches you have, of that resistance area, it could be more powerful when we swoop below it. Good. Clearly, 70.5, 70.50, why did I say it like that, is the point of resistance for um, Shopify. So keep an eye on this one. Thank you so to is everybody. Is a bullish pattern or a bearish pattern? Bearish. Thank you. And we're also down on the day. So it even is more supported by the fact, see, I'm learning, I'm learning. Killing it, That's, um, you're, you're killing it, good you. for you. Um, yeah, so um, learning from the professor over here. And yeah, we are down about 50, uh, not 50%, 0.5% on the day, more or less. So we are, I think the, the bearish pattern is bolstered by the fact we were already down on the day. So yeah, just uh, thank you for bringing up Shopify over here in the chat. One um, to note, yeah, I mean, the only trade I've really done was NVIDIA. I was keeping an eye on those weight loss names, but I couldn't really find a good point of entry for those. Um, I'll pull up Nova Nordisk. Um, I don't know if I said that right, but NVO. Yeah, I was basically kind of waiting for a dip, but then when we had that dip, we were kind of teetering around, hobbling like a, a child on a, like a tricycle or riding the bike for the first time. So I was like, this is not really a bike that I would like to um, join in on the ride for right now in Novo Nordisk. But if we have kind of a more decided move to the upside, I'll hop along. We do have positive news with Wagobi in Japan. 
But yeah, that's, um, I, and this is also, I would argue this is, a, you know, we have kind of a bullish pattern here, um, slightly higher highs. Yeah, um, that is my, my take on the day. But yeah, Shopify, very, good very much a descending wedge. Thank you. Yeah, and Shopify, a Canadian company, baby. We love Shopify up here. I always forget Shopify is Canadian. Oh yeah, they're as Canadian as they get, baby. Um, all right, um, I'm in the futures here, and I just took my first beak wetter there through the break of VWAP. Alert, alert, alert. We are at VWAP on the NQ. I do uh, expect a level of resistance here, uh, so I'm very careful. I'm going to be very cognizant of rejections at these levels. Okay, now, why I got into the futures trade? I got into it because we broke this level over here. To me, the 16 0 uh, one, two, one, three area. Look how many touches we have and breaks below that level. So I said to myself, we get a print above there. I want all the smoke. I've taken a piece out so far. I am worried that this VWAP area will be a key area of resistance, especially on a day where there's very little volume, uh, unlikely to be, a, you know, a great degree of follow through, whether long or short, knowing that this would likely be an inside day. I guess my ambition is for us to go break even on the day, and that's a move back into 16.050. But we're definitely gonna have to break the 16.0 and a quarter before we get to that 16.0 and a half. Uh, no question about that. So I am very cognizant of this price area as a resistance level. And in the same way, that it's a resistance level in the future, you need to be looking at that level as a possible turnaround point for any move up on these mag seven names. Because if the future rejects off that VWAP area and breaks down and comes back into 16, save and except for Tesla, which is obviously a secular mover on the day, yeah. a lot of these other, mag, let's call them uh, the mag seven minus Tesla Mac could seven. absolutely, the mag seven could absolutely turn back around, guys. We literally have three minutes left to go. It was a short one. Uh, I hope we were able to make the double tops and double bottoms as, as very clear as we could for you. What you really need to understand is you need to be able to chart the resistance levels and the support levels in the case of a double bottom, the resistance level in the case of a double top. You need to know the, the difference between the neckline and the resistance level. Why? Because that has to factor in into your risk to reward. If there's a huge gap between those two, then it makes your risk to reward um, analysis more convoluted because you have to look for a support or resistance level that's equal uh, to that, at least one to one if you're doing a one to trade, one to one trade, or double that length if you're doing a two to one trade. So that needs to form part of your analysis. The other thing that needs to form your analysis, the break of the resistance or support level with good amount of volume. You need to be looking for traders that are jumping in there with you to support, yes, this is the right level that I'm going for. Now, there's gonna be bamboozlement, especially uh, when you're trading on an intraday time frame. Last but not least, something that you need to keep in mind that we did that wasn't necessarily applicable to some of the other chart patterns we were talking about. When you see a double top or double bottom on a daily time frame, it likely means that you're gonna have a longer run, either north or south, um, for that particular instrument. Then when you see that time frame on an intraday, an hour, a half an hour, a five minute, you will likely get a move in the direction you expect, but it's not likely to be prolonged. So that is something you need to be cognizant of on that. Adair, final thoughts. Yeah, um, uh, thank you so much to Bears versus Bulls for the shout out to us in the chat. Um, thank you for you know being awesome and thank you everybody for being here and um, learning along with us, with me especially, because I am very much still learning. Um, hopefully we, you know, we learned some stuff about chart patterns this week. So excited for next week and the future, more learning. Um, yeah, I guess I can, I can send it off now. Are you guys ready? ready? Uh, no, we no, have not another yet. We have another minute. minute. Yeah, we have yeah I guess sorry about yeah, that. That's fine. Um, yeah, we'll my final though. thoughts are it has been, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a good trading day. Happy I got out of a video when we did because now it is dropping like it's hot. Shout out to Snoop Dogg. Dropping like a rock. Dropping like it's hot. Um, but yeah, we are, we are. <laughs> It's a Friday story, guys. Yeah, um, and it's a long weekend, so we'll sing up a story. We're following a, a little bit here on NVIDIA. Happy I got out where I did. Um, yeah, that is the trading tips of the week, and it's been, I feel like, hopefully a good week of learning over here at How to Trade. All right, let's send it off. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Um, see you all next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Brendo's at the big desk.
Uh, just like that, yeah, 12 o'clock, guys, on a Black Friday edition of the market overall. It's going to be uh, one more hour to go here. 